We are here in Westchester at the Greenberg Library, and I have just had the privilege of sitting in on Vanessa Irvin Morris's Librarian Book Club, and we're going to ask her a few questions to talk about why she started this. How are books acquired? People often wonder, how, how does a book end up in the library? Well, there's many different ways in which books end up in libraries. It depends on the library system, um, who runs the library, how the library is funded. But generally, if we're talking like across the board, basically there are administrators that may uh, select materials from different book review resources, um, word of mouth, patron requests, and then there are librarians who may uh, purchase uh, titles specifically for the communities that they serve based on those same criteria in terms of patron requests, review resources, and items and things like that. Okay, and you are a scholar of street lit. Why do you think it's important that street lit be included in public library systems across the country? Well, it's, it's a genre, just like any other genre, where um, if readers, if that is what they're interested to read, then it should be made available for them to read. And part of librarianship, uh, one of the ethics of um, ethical, um, like a standards of librarianship is that we are neutral, that we do mm -hmm. not judge uh uh, what people read, we um, basically are charged with making available or making accessible uh, what uh, community members are interested in reading. So if they're interested in reading this, then we make our way to make sure that that's uh, accessible. Okay. And what role do you think cultural competence has in the library sciences field? Do you feel like enough librarians and acquisition specialists demonstrate competence in various cultures? That's a very excellent question. That's, that's a core question of my research. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the uh, demographics of libra librarians uh, parallels the demographics of teachers in America. So you have uh, over 90 percent of um, librarians who are uh, Caucasian middle class females. Um, um, maybe scratch middle class, I don't even really know about the socioeconomic status, but definitely white females. And um, that is the over 90%. So if you have uh, librarians choosing materials for various, for diverse communities, then um, they need to be culturally competent in terms of being sensitive about what uh, is appropriate, what um, subtleties are at play that may be offensive um, in various uh, materials that are available at the library. Okay. And you actually have a group of about 10 librarians who mm -hmm. were here earlier today. Mm -hmm. They all volunteered to join this group? Yes. Okay. And what was your goal in assembling these librarians? Well, I have two librarian groups. I have one that's um, in Philadelphia, and they are uh, African-American librarians uh, serving uh, in public libraries in Philadelphia. And then I have uh, the group here in Westchester, and they are Caucasian librarians serving uh, public libraries in Westchester library system. Westchester County, New York. So I'm looking at um, how culture identity plays a role in uh, public library services of librarians. Um, or it does it play a role? I, I dare say it does. I can definitely uh, put myself out there to say that it does. And so I'm looking at how and what ways does culture um, play a role in, the, in how librarians form their professional identity. Okay, great. Now to ask you a, a somewhat related question, when you were growing up, what did the library mean to you? The library was a place of sanctuary and safety and refuge for me. Um, I was thinking about this the other day. Only have, there was only one librarian that I liked. And when I was growing up, all the libraries that I ran into I really didn't like. They were usually very rigid and, you know, not very friendly. Uh, but there was this one librarian in Camden, New Jersey, at the Camden Public Library, who uh, was very nice and let me be me in the library. So she allowed me to sit where I wanted to sit, read what I wanted to read. She would give me good suggestions based on my age and my reading level, and she took an interest. And so that always made an impact. That made an impact on me. Okay. What advice would you give to young people today in terms of their use of the public library system? 
I say um, that they, they, they need to know that it's open and it's free and it's available for them. And that there is a lot of services in public libraries today that are specifically geared towards um, satisfying the reading interests and needs of young people. So uh, young adults, uh, you don't have anywhere to go after school. Uh, there's nothing to do on the weekends. Go to your public library. There's much more to do there um, in terms of reading. Uh, internet um, services, uh, there's programs um, at libraries that are specifically geared towards young adults and children. So there's always something to do at your um, local library. Okay. And for young people who feel like the library doesn't have the books that they're interested in, what could they do about that? They can demand them. They, 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 um, they have a voice. And you go to your librarian and you tell your librarian what you want to read. You, you educate yourself in terms of what is the um, author of the book, who wrote the book, what's the name of the book, the title of the book, and you let them know that you want this book by this author, and if they don't have it on the shelf there, where can they get it? Because there are mechanisms that uh, where every library can get virtually any book that's requested. Okay, and libraries are for everyone. Everyone. All right. Everyone, no one excluded. Thank you very much, Vanessa Irvin Morris, for sharing your views with us. No, thank you.